Today we're going to show you how uh, you can convert a pedestrian flat screen TV of pretty much any make or model into a somewhat useful electronic scoreboard display provided that flat screen TV has access to an uh, electrical receptacle to power it up and it's in within range of a uh, Wi-Fi network. Now there are two enabling technologies which allow us to show this uh, solution today. The first is from a hardware perspective. Uh, what we're showing you here is uh, a Raspberry Pi. Now this is all the rage in the embedded community right now. At $35 US, this is a full-fledged Linux ARM-based computer. We're going to use this not only to receive network updates for the scoreboard, but also to drive the video for our flat screen TV. In addition to this hardware advance, uh, Oracle just recently made available a developer preview for Java SE Embedded 8 with JavaFX. And what that enables us to do is to resurrect an old application written for a Windows PC a couple of years ago and move it directly onto this hardware platform. And the beauty of it is there is absolutely no changes required, not even a recompilation, to move the binary, in this case a JAR file, onto our Raspberry Pi and run our scoreboard application. So with that introduction out of the way, let's show how we actually physically connect up this device to our flat screen TV. So we're showing you now the back of the TV, and the first thing we're going to do is connect up a Wi-Fi dongle, USB dongle, such that we can now receive network updates for scoreboard. And now we'll just Velcro this device right into the back of the TV, and just need to connect up two, two cables. One is HDMI to drive the video, and the second, which is interesting, is power. Uh, the Raspberry Pi uses a mini USB port for power and we're just going to take advantage of the USB port that is on the TV to provide power to this such that when we turn the TV on the Raspberry Pi will also start up also. So let's now start up the TV and that will power up our Raspberry Pi. Now this takes on the order of about 90 seconds to two minutes so once we show the boot screen We'll go ahead and uh, switch over to our application to give you a feel for what that looks like. So here is our Raspberry Pi boot screen. You can see in the upper left hand corner the Raspberry Pi logo. So again, let's let this boot up and we'll return to this in a few minutes. Let's give you a feel for our scoreboard application by starting it up. We're on a Windows laptop right now. And uh, the application you see here is written in JavaFX and it takes advantage of some of the built-in features that are easy to implement. For example, uh, we use animation to give the user a visual cue. You see how the digit expands as we run the cursor over it, that this is the digit that we want to edit. And you can simply change the value of the uh, digit by either clicking and choosing a number or using arrow keys to scroll up and down to change that value. What you see on the left-hand side is every time a change is made, an XML string gets spit out. Now that is here printed out for debug purposes, but in addition it gets sent out over a network socket. So the idea is you can have a client program that opens up that socket, reads this data, and interprets it in some way. So what we've done is created a client version of this exact same program that will start up now. And its idea is to open up that network socket and read the data and update the scoreboard accordingly. So you see that these two displays are not entirely identical. Uh, as I run my cursor over the controller, you see that the digits are animated. On my remote side, they are not because I can't hand edit these. The only way this scoreboard gets updated is when it receives packets. Now, right now, these two are connected by virtue of the fact that this um, uh, status line does say they're connected, such that when I make a change now, let's say we're going to convert change guess from one, uh, two, zero to five, you'll see that our guest score is also changed too. Um, let's change the clock to, say, two minutes. And we'll start the clock, and you'll see that packets are being updated uh, real time as we make that change. So what we'd like to do now is take this client version of the program and move it over to our Raspberry Pi and display it full screen on the flat screen TV. 
So here you see our flat screen TV with a full screen display of our client scoreboard application. The Raspberry Pi has been configured such that after boot up, it will automatically display a full screen version of the client application. Also notice uh, at the bottom of the screen, we kept the status meshes there showing that in fact, uh, it is connected uh, logically to the socket that our scoreboard controller application will be sending those XML packets out over. So with our scoreboard controller application running on a laptop, and the fact that it is established an, a socket connection with uh, the Raspberry Pi on our uh, flat screen TV, let's go ahead and make some changes to this interface and see if those changes are reflected in real time fashion on the flat screen TV. So let's make the home score two. Uh, we'll make the guest score one. Uh, we'll add a penalty here. So number five has two minutes for roughing. And we'll set the clock to one minute and 12 seconds. So now we'll start the clock on our laptop. And we'll see how that is reflected on our video display. So the clock is being updated real time. And furthermore, as we get uh, below a minute, updates occur every tenth of a second. And you can see that the Raspberry Pi and the display are having no difficulty at all uh, keeping up with uh, the rate of 10 or more XML updates per second. So there you have it. Uh, with relatively little cost, you can convert a TV into an interesting scoreboard type application.